Hi guys, this is Erica from Gokche Capital. Now before I begin, be sure to click subscribe and turn on the notification bell. If you were to walk along the southern edge of Dallas's White Rock Lake two years ago, it would be a mulched up wasteland. But today, you'll find prairie blossoms. What happened? We'll find out at the end of this video. But first, if you own property in the Great Plains, perhaps consider restoring its prairie. And in today's video, we have the top things you should know. Number one, what is a prairie? A prairie is an enormous stretch of flat grassland with moderate temperatures, moderate rainfall, and few trees. In the U.S., the prairie is most common in the Midwest. Number two, what is prairie restoration? Prairie restoration is the process of returning a prairie to land from which it was removed. It could also mean revitalizing degraded prairies. Number three, what are the benefits of restoring a prairie? Prairies are key ecosystems and they bring a number of benefits, including the ability to improve water quality, enhance soil stabilization, and create habitat for birds, animals, and insects, in particular, threatened and endangered plants and animals. Number four, if you do restore a prairie to your land, can you use your property for other uses? Conservation prairies cannot be used for commercial purposes or high impact recreational activities, but that doesn't mean you can't do anything with your land. For example, carefully managed grazing can be compatible with prairies, as can haying, occasional seed harvests, and a number of low impact recreational activities, such as hiking or hunting. And number five, if you do want to bring a prairie back to your land, what are the steps? Well, the first thing to do is to assess your site. You'll want to understand your soil characteristics, the extent of erosion on the land, and whether a herbicide has been used on your property or is being used in neighboring fields. The next step is to remove any incompatible vegetation as necessary. You can then seed and plant your land. Upland prairies should be seeded using a no-till drill or broadcast method. You can check our blog post for more information or contact a local nursery familiar with native plants. Once seeding is done, you'll go into the establishment phase, which generally takes about five to seven years. At this stage, you'll do a lot of heavy weeding to remove invasive or incompatible species. And finally, around year six, you will find yourself in the long-term management phase. At this stage, the amount of annual work should go down, but you'll need to continue to either burn or simulate burning through weed removal on a regular basis. But now that we've covered the basics of prairie restoration, let's return to Dallas's White Rock Lake. At the southern end of the lake is a site known as the Old Fish Hatchery. As the name would suggest, the site is an old hatchery established back when White Rock Lake served as a reservoir. The hatchery ceased operations sometime in the 1930s, and its 50-odd pools were allowed to return to their native state. Today, it is wild wetlands and woodlands, owned by the Dallas Water Utilities, and home to numerous birds, including warblers, titmice, chickadees, wrens, and woodpeckers, as well as a naturalized colony of monk parakeets. Yet running straight through this wild oasis is a transmission line, sitting on a three-acre easement owned by Encore, Dallas's power company. Though power lines run along this easement, it is still lush with trees, grasses, rushes, and an emergent wetland. Or at least it used to be, for on October 5th, 2020, Encore clear-cut the entire three-acre easement, leaving behind barren mulch. Sadly, this was not the first time the utility had demolished the area. In fact, there was even a prior agreement, albeit not a legally binding one, in which the power company promised it would consult with key stakeholders before significantly altering the natural landscape. This agreement existed because 20 years ago, Encore's predecessor did exactly the same thing, violating a set of previously negotiated maintenance protocols designed to balance the utility's needs with the preservation of the surrounding wildlife habitat. So outraged were citizens by the second betrayal that the local council member even put together an advisory committee to develop restoration plans for the area. The advisory committee recommended the planting of low-growth blackland prairie and a new organization was born, 
friends of the old fish hatchery to oversee the work. A small army of volunteers descended on the site to begin replanting, while the Texas Discovery Garden donated a number of plants from their nearby nursery. In the end, just two years later, prairie grasses and flowers have returned, all thanks to a small group of regulars who show up every week, rain or shine, to continue the work. Restoring a prairie takes a lot of elbow grease, but in the end, you get butterflies, birds, and bees. And for many, spending a few Saturdays pulling up weeds is a small price to pay to hear the grasses sway, the bees hum, and the butterflies flutter. But what do you think? Do you have any stories about prairie restoration? Let us know in the comments. Did you like this video? You're going to love our Gokche Land Due Diligence program. We'll make you a land due diligence expert in just seven days. Check it out at gokchecapital.com glad. And while you're at our website, don't forget to explore our $1 down properties at gokchecapital.com slash listing. Finally, don't hesitate to reach out. You can email, call, or text, and we will respond as soon as possible. So thank you for listening and more to come.